Well, good morning. My name is Barrett Wolverton, and I'm the lead pastor here at Grace Covenant Church in South San Francisco. Thanks for joining us for GCC at Home. GCC is a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, family-oriented church here in South City that is geared towards uh, spreading God's hope and God's love uh, for others. Uh, on top of GCC at Home, we also offer small groups online during the week. We offer uh, connections for kids ministry and so many more events and different things that go on during the week here at church. And so to learn about that, you can go to our website, www.gracecovssf.com to check out all the stuff that we have to offer on our website. You can also go to our website to connect with any of our staff members if you'd like any of us to uh, speak with you or pray with you about something that you might have going on in your life. Uh, but we're here for you and we're here to um, make this experience seamless and to help you enjoy and learn more about what is going on here at church. So sit back and enjoy the service today and we look forward to meeting you. It's Jennifer. So humans have been on the earth for thousands and thousands of years, right? So COVID isn't the first time that something dangerous has spread around. In Jesus' day, one of the dangerous things was called leprosy. It's something they didn't have any medicine for and it killed so many people. It's a dangerous skin disease that once you started seeing it on you, you knew that you were probably going to die. And it, was, it spread so easily that you couldn't be around anyone that didn't have it. So they would kick you out of the city and you had to go live with other people dying with this. And it was awful. So Jesus, in the book of Luke, Jesus, Luke tells a story, of it's a very short story, of Jesus sitting there. And all of a sudden, these ten lepers come to the gates of the city. And they're like, Jesus, Master, save us, save us. And Jesus, you know, he's cool, calm self. He's like, go show yourself to the priest. I mean, the priest was the one that actually had to, like if you felt like you were doing okay and you had gotten over it, then you had to show yourself to the priest and he'd be like, oh, wow, great, you did it good, okay. You can come back and live with us now. Or he could say, no, you're still not better. You have to go back to the colony. So Jesus said, okay, go, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't call down God from heaven. He didn't put anything. He didn't do anything special. Like there was no magic word spoken. He just said, go, go show yourself. Go see, see if you're okay. And I mean, I could, I could just see the lepers like, me, are you talking to us? Like we have lepers. Okay, 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 let's go, let's go. So they go and as they're walking, one of them stops and he's like, wait a minute. I don't have leprosy anymore. Oh, I'm better. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he did this. Oh, he's God. And he runs back. And the Bible says that he threw himself on the ground. And he says, thank you. And he just begins to worship him. And Jesus in his cool self says like, wait a minute. Where are the other, t there were 10 of you. Wait, there were 10 minus one, nine? Where are the other nine? And he says, looks at the guy and he just says, go, your faith has saved you. Now the guy, Jesus had already healed him of leprosy. So he'd already saved him from the leper leprosy, but he's talking about a different way he saved him. The guy believed in Jesus and he was worshiping Jesus as God. He became a Christian and he was saying, go, your belief in me has saved you. Now he'd already saved him as from leprosy, but there's a difference between the one guy that stopped and believed in Jesus than the guys that God gave them something they didn't deserve. They didn't go on some noble quest and fight the dragon or do all sorts of good. He he saved them. He saved them and he they didn't deserve it. But one guy stopped and realized that Jesus is God and he was saved in more than that way. Now, there's two different types of people here. The, ones, the one that had gratitude, the one that stopped and thanked Jesus, and the one that didn't. Now, last week we talked about 
you know, others will know that you're a Christian because of how you love others. You're not robots, remember? Another way is by our gratitude. As Christians, we know that we didn't do anything to deserve being saved. And that's what the guy stopped and did. And that's why the Bible, for one quick second, stops and points out, wow, this guy was saved. And this is what being saved looks like. You are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are here moving in Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker. Escape light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That is who you Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even though I see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a you are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 So I have a question for us this morning. Have you ever had your attitude change or shift dramatically? really, really quickly. Maybe you were having a really great day and then something really terrible happened and all of a sudden you're in just the worst headspace, you have the worst attitude, you're so annoyed. Or maybe you were having a really terrible day and something fantastic happened or you had a complete mental shift or uh, you went to clear your head somehow and all of a sudden your attitude shifted and it was very positive. Or maybe you were just having a, a bit of a muddy head day and you weren't having that great of a time but it wasn't that bad of a time either and, and, then, and then that shifted and all of a sudden you felt clear and, and light and like your mind was totally with you again. Have you ever had a significant attitude shift? I know uh, for me personally, I watch this happen with little kids a lot. Uh, several years back, I was a summer camp counselor uh, at a few different programs and I had uh, younger kids than I usually worked with. So I was with first and second and third graders off and on. And, and I remember thinking to myself, man, these kids' attitudes are so dramatic. They shift every which way. It's, it's like I cannot keep up. It's exhausting just to know what attitude they're in right now. They'll be having a great time and five seconds later we'll flip. And then I started realizing, you know, adults aren't that different. <laughs> our attitudes can shift very quickly too. Our, our moods and our, and our attitudes can, can shift and change really dramatically and really quickly. And I started wondering, maybe this isn't the first grade thing. Maybe this is more of a human thing. So I wonder, can you think of a time when your attitude shifted or changed, changed suddenly? And if you can't think of any, uh, maybe ask the people around you and say, can you think of a time when my attitude changed? And I'm sure they'll have some examples for you. Maybe, maybe ask your friends or your family. Uh, we, we all kind of go through this very human experience of, of shifting attitudes and moods. Oftentimes, uh, it's a result of the circumstances around us playing on our own hearts and minds and spirits and souls and bodies in such a way that we react to that. Today's passage that we're going to be looking at out of the scripture uh, gives us a way uh, not only to interact with circumstances differently, but to interact with ourselves differently, to interact with others differently, uh, and to really center ourselves uh, in an attitude of Christ. So 
Uh, I'm going to invite you to open up your Bibles, to uh, Google it, use it on your tablet, however, however you look at Scripture. Uh, open up your Scriptures to 1 Thessalonians 5. We're in 1 Thessalonians 5 today. Uh, I'm reading from the New International Version, the NIV, 1 Thessalonians 5. I'm starting in verse 16. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is a brief passage, so I'm going to read it one more time if you want to read this with me. First Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I'm going to pray for us right now. Jesus, I ask that you uh, open up our hearts and our minds this morning to remember what it means to turn to you, to rejoice always, to pray continually, to give thanks in any and every circumstance, uh, because this is your will for us, God. Would you open our, our minds and our hearts to receive the fact that your will for us is good uh, and that you've asked us uh, to do something, not just to ask us to do something, but because it is for your glory and our good. May you help us to see that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I, I lost my, one of my grandparents a few weeks before my high school graduation. And I remember uh, my granddad passing, and I remember thinking to myself uh, as a 17-year-old, this is going to be such a tough few years uh, for my Grammy because she had been married to granddad for, I, I don't even know, 50, 60 years. It was so long, I wasn't even trying to keep track anymore. Um, they had always lived together. They had been through a lot of struggles and hard times, um, and they had really supported each other and seen each other through. They had been through many challenges and, um, and, and life changes, moving and kids and grandkids, and, uh, and they had navigated all of this together. And now with my grandfather passing, I remember thinking, what, what is life going to be like for my grandmother? These might be some of the most trying years of her life. Incredibly, in the three years before she also passed, uh, these three years without my granddad, uh, her first years uh, living alone uh, in decades, she transformed uh, not to someone who, because of circumstance, uh, withdrew or became bitter or uh, resentful of the world, but she transformed into uh, genuinely the most thankful person I have ever met in my life. Not just, and, and I can't, I feel I can't over exaggerate this, not just somewhat thankful, uh, not just in passing thankful, not even in an attitude of thankfulness, but the most thankful person I have ever met in my entire life still to this day. I remember uh, in those few years uh, following granddad's passing, going over to her house from time to time, and I remember sitting in her living room, and I remember maybe at about the two year mark thinking to myself, I wonder if I can find two minutes in which she doesn't use the words thankful or grateful. And I tried over and over again. I would start the clock on, on my watch, right? I would go, all right, two minutes, I'm gonna watch. And then 30 seconds later, she would say, I'm just so thankful for, and I would go, okay, start over, start over. And then, and then I would li be listening and she would say, I'm just so grateful for. This was woven into the fabric of the words she used on a day-to-day -day basis. It, was, it felt to me at the time almost ridiculous how frequently she was thankful for things and the smallest thing she would be thankful for. And she would be thankful for the same thing that she was thankful for 30 minutes ago. It wasn't a, a punch card. Oh, I was thankful for that thing yesterday. I can't be thankful for it again today. She would say, I'm so thankful for my stove. I'm so thankful for my, my housekeeper who comes in and helps out with me. And I'm so thankful for the people who go on a walk around the block with me. And I'm so thankful for my walker that I can take on this walk around the block. And I'm so thankful for so many decades with your granddad. And I'm so thankful you're here right now. And just on and on and on. It was entire conversations built around gratefulness. I had never seen anything like it. And I remember that gratefulness snowballing year after year after year, leading up to her own death and her own passing. I remember that, that, that gratefulness becoming uh, like, a, like a blizzard, just this massive avalanche of gratefulness that grew every time I saw her and that compelled me for so much to be grateful for, that, that she and what could have been uh, and probably was some of the most trying years of her life, some of the most painful and lonely and isolated years of her life, 
that she found a way in which to give thanks. And I remember asking her about this one time and saying, Grammy, you're so thankful. You're so grateful. It's in every conversation we're ever having. And she would say, yeah, I didn't, I didn't used to be that grateful, but I'm just trying to give thanks in everything like the scripture says. That testimony is one that I remember every time I look at this passage because it, it was radical to me to watch someone become so transformed by the power of one simple practice that their life, what could have been some of the most uh, isolating and dark years of their life became actually one of the greatest testaments to the power of God to transform a person's life. No matter their age, their stage, no matter what's going on in their life, that God was still present with my grandmother in this and God was still transforming her to be more and more like Jesus. I remember when I started looking at how there was thankfulness in scripture several, several years ago. I remember thinking of, of my grandmother's testimony and I remember thinking, I'm going to do a little more research on this. I wonder what actually was going on inside of her that compelled her to this kind of gratefulness. So I started doing um, some learning and some studying. Why does God say to give thanks in every circumstance? Why did I see such a transformation in my Grammy when she began to give thanks in every circumstance? I'm going to say this, uh, I, am, I am by no means uh, a, a uh, counselor or therapist, and so all these, all these things that I'm saying about the benefits of thankfulness uh, is not coming from a licensed therapist, but by someone who's been doing their own research, okay? But I've learned so much about that, and one of the things that I've learned about thankfulness is that it literally rewires your brain. So our brains uh, are kind of conditioned by our circumstances, by our attitudes, by our day-to-day -day routines and habits to function in a certain way. But when you start putting thankfulness in your brain, it actually kind of creates, if, if you picture water and how water cuts out rivers, right, or it cuts out um, little rivulets, if you see uh, some of this rain that we've been getting, um, maybe you walked out to your car and you saw these little rivulets of water running down, that's kind of the way um, that our brains work in having these channels that we just function in. There's these, there's these little rivulets of, of um, ways in which we function mentally. But what thankfulness does is essentially what a windshield wiper does, right? Is it just is this massive whoo, whoo, and thankfulness uh, wipes at our uh, mental state in really dramatic ways. And then it creates its own new channels. So it's default. So just like my grandma, she had one piece of thankfulness after another, after another, after another, until it became so habitual she couldn't help but be grateful for anything and everything. See, God has created us with these incredible minds that have these, uh, there's, there's a concept called neuroplasticity, which basically means our brains have the ability to change and transform. You're not stuck with the brain you have. Uh, sometimes that's harder than others, right? And that's why there's entire fields of neuroscience. But this neuroplasticity that we all inherently have just by being human is a way in which God has allowed us to not be controlled or reigned by circumstances, to not be controlled by society, to not be controlled by the norms of the day, but he's given us this ability to be more and to not only be more, but to change when change is needed. In 1 Thessalonians 5, when it says to rejoice always, when it says to pray continually, when it says to give thanks in all circumstance, it's not an indictment if you don't already do these things. If you don't pray every waking moment like I don't, this isn't a, a condemnation of you. What this is inviting us into is a new way of living. God, through his, through his scriptures, is saying there's a better way to live. There's a way to rewire your brain. There's a way in which circumstance doesn't have to control you. Give thanks in all circumstances. I remember as I started to do some of this research and this learning and I started to see some of the true wisdom of scripture, the wisdom of God when he says over and over again in many passages, not just in 1 Thessalonians 5, to give thanks, I started realizing that he was giving me a way to be like him, to be focused on him, to be focused on a better way of living life. He was giving me a way to do this in the scriptures and this was being backed up by, by science and by studies in, in neuroscience fields. And, and, and as he was doing this, I started realizing that I had a choice in which I could practice small steps of transformation every single day. This is what I mean, okay? 
try this out this week. All right, I, I, would, I would love, if you try this out, please send me the story because I have, I have asked people to try this out time and time again and the stories are incredible that come out of this. It's, it's hilarious usually the first few times. If you find yourself in a mental rut, okay, you could be having a bad day, you could be really tired and sleepy, you could be uh, stressed out, you could be you know, crunching deadlines. You could, if, you, if you have yourself in a really uh, terrible mood sometime this week, try sitting down and writing a list of 10 things you're thankful for. Hear me out, 10 things, it could be, it could be anything. You could start with, I, I have, uh, if, if you have a roof over your head, I have a roof over my head. I had a meal today. I am wearing shoes. I, I mean, you could, do, you could do the simplest things. I have, you know, my, my kids are here with me, whatever it is, okay? 10 things that you're thankful for. And see if your mood doesn't dramatically change from before and after this simple act of practicing gratefulness. It's this windshield wiper in your mind that these little rivulets and all, all the normal ways of thinking and operating, and all that's just, just going on just fine. And then you take this windshield wiper of gratefulness and all of a sudden you can see clearly, you can see differently than you did before. It doesn't change any of the circumstances, but it changes you in the circumstance. This is what God is talking about in 1 Thessalonians 5 when he admonishes us to give thanks in all circumstances. There's uh, a lot of really powerful stories that came out of uh, really atrocious years during World War II. Uh, if you've ever heard the name Cory Ten Boom, uh, there's this really beautiful book. It's called The Hiding Place. If you need something to read over the holidays, uh, you have a little downtime and you need some great reading, this is a, a, an incredible, incredible story of uh, this, one, this one woman, Cory Ten Boom, and her family, her sister Betsy, and her father, and some other um, friends and family, who they created a, a false wall inside their house. Um, during the reign of, uh, in, in Nazi Germany, they, they created a false wall in their house in which they hid Jews uh, so that they wouldn't get taken away to the internment camps uh, and concentration camps. But unfortunately, over the course of, of their uh, trying to protect others, they themselves were taken um, by Nazis into concentration camps. So Corey and Betsy, uh, these two sisters, were taken into a concentration camp. And there's these, you know, um, these long halls essentially where the prisoners slept. Um, and all of these halls are just miserable living conditions. If you know anything about World War II, you, you already know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, uh, concentration camps were just horror camps, terrible, terrible atrocities, um, just depths of human nature that, that uh, never should be known, right? And, uh, and Corey and, and Betsy were living in this, but Corey was a person of faith and she truly believed that God was with her, but it was hard to see in the concentration camps. Uh, that's, that's not hard to imagine. It would be hard to believe in God during these terrible times, but Betsy, uh, her faith could not be squelched, and she remembered scriptures, and she would call them to mind, and she would practice her faith even in a concentration camp, and Corey would say, I'm just trying to be like Betsy because I can't, this is, this is so hard. And at one point, they were holding a, a women's Bible study. These two sisters, they were holding women's Bible studies in the evenings in their halls, but they had to do it secretly because if the guards found out, uh, they would surely be killed for it. So they're holding this, these secret women's Bible studies and, and things are going from bad to worse and it's winter and they're cold and hungry and uh, terrible, terrible conditions. And then there was a lice outbreak in just their cabin. So all these other, all these other halls that these, these women are sleeping in in this, in this concentration camp, things are bad to worse, but there's no lice. But these women who are trying to be faithful, who are trying to trust God, who are trying to hold a Bible study for goodness sake, um, there's a massive lice outbreak in their cabin and it's just miserable. And Betsy says to Corey, do you remember the passage that says to give thanks and everything? We should thank God for the lice. And Corey says, you are out of your mind. There's no way we're thanking God for the lice. And Betsy begins to pray, dear God, thank you for these lice. And I remember reading this story for the first time and thinking, listen, Betsy, you're so sweet, but you're a little out of touch. I thought this to myself. And Corey's sentiment was about the same. But a couple of weeks start to go by and the lice stay and Betsy continues praying and thanking God for these lice. 
And one day Corey overhears uh, some of the guards talking amongst each other um, about why they haven't been visiting a certain hall. And, and, they, and they keep wondering, how, how are we getting away with this Bible study? I mean, it's been weeks, it's been months. We should have been busted for this by now. And Corey overhears these guards talking to each other and saying, as long as we don't go in that hall, they have this massive lice outbreak. And so those women, we don't even know what's going on in that hall, but we're not gonna touch it with a 10 foot pole because there's lice there and we're not gonna get those lice. Corey realized in that moment that Betsy's act of faith to thank God for even the lice was an act of faith that God was working in ways that they could never have imagined. Even the lice, the horror of, of lice on top of everything else was a way in which God was making a way for these women to be able to show others the scripture and have a Bible study and show other women that even in the midst of a concentration camp, God loved them and was caring for them. I wanna invite you today to simply practice the kind of life that this scripture puts forward. Give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. You're not denying what's going on around you. Just like Corey and Betsy weren't denying they lived in a concentration camp. You're not denying the struggles that are going on in your life. You're not denying, like my grandma, the sorrow of losing someone you love or the harshness of having to adjust to some really painful life changes. This is not an act of denial, but an act of faith in dark times. We have a hundred things we could be complaining about in 2020, <laughs> more than that. Um, but we also have uh, an opportunity to live a life of continued faith. We have an opportunity to give thanks in all circumstances. And in doing so, we tap into the way that God has wired our brains. We tap into the way that God has invited communities. And we tap into more and more of who we are supposed to be, less and less rattled by the, the passing waves of circumstance and more and more confident in a God who loves us. My invitation this morning is very, very simple practice thankfulness. Say it out loud, write it down if you can. Uh, it, it does something to us when we write things, when we put a pen or a pencil to paper and physically write things down. If you need to pause this recording right now and write down a few things you're thankful for, uh, set an alarm for some time to do this this week. Practice it every day if you can, but recognize the power of the invitation that God has given us that we are not uh, subject, we're not slaves to just every day and what it may or may not bring, but we actually have uh, this invitation from God himself to remember that he is in control, to have faith in who he is and to thank him that in all things he is working them for good, for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Let me pray for us. Jesus, I do ask uh, that this reminder uh, speaks to us exactly where we're at today, that even in the midst of struggle and trial, um, in the midst of a, a very confusing and upsetting year, um, in the midst of elections, in the midst of racial uh, inequality and protests, in the midst of uh, so many uh, unsettling moments as a nation, as a community, in the midst of an upsurge in a pandemic, God, that's worldwide, uh, in the midst of so many things that uh, have the opportunity to unsettle us, that you have given us uh, kind of an anchor and just said, no, give thanks in everything. Rejoice always, pray continually, that you've said, I'm listening to you. That you, Jesus, have said, I came to be with you and I'm inviting you to trust me by giving thanks. Would you send your spirit to empower us to be able to do that more and more this week? We pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I hold my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. O 
oh how strange and divine I can sing all is mine yet not I but true Christ in me The night is dark but I am not forsaken for by my side the Savior He will stay I labor on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need His power is displayed to this I hold my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night has been won and I shall overcome yet not I but through Christ in me fate I dread I know I am forgiven the future sure the price it has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave to this I hold my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free at that I, but true Christ in me. to follow Jesus for he has said that he will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne for this I hold my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but true Christ in me. Yet not I, but true Christ in me. Yet not I, but true Christ in me. Thank you for joining us today online at Grace Covenant Church. Before you leave, please take a moment to consider giving a donation to our ministry. When we give, we are making an offering to God as a way of giving back to Him with what He has blessed us with. We offer several convenient ways to give. You can give online by going to our website at www.gracecovssf.com give. You can also text any dollar amount to 84321 to give by text. 